Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And I'm so fired up today because I get to connect with you. As a matter of fact, I just want to give you a round of applause, a voice of encouragement today to say thank you for what you do. Wherever you are around the globe, and we've got listeners from all over the place, literally around the world, that DM me, text me, message me, email me, and let me know just how much the Impact Show is making a difference in their life today. And for that, I say thank you because your words are firing me up. So therefore, today, I've got something special for you. I'm going back into the stand, so to speak, and I've got some Q&A. Now, I've asked for your questions over the last couple of weeks, and I've got uh, some of the top questions that have come in. So thank you. I'm going to give you a shout out by name uh, on the IG if I have that. But I believe these questions are going to deliver some value. Some are fun. Some are uh, more in depth. But I'm going to go right to it now. So uh, relax, enjoy the show, or perhaps you're working out and you want to pump some iron. So get after it. Get your heart rate monitor strapped on, your my zone. Get some MEPS and let's rock and roll. Number one, first question from 1TS Dana. 1TS Dana. She says, TD, how do I sustain to get my mind right every day? I had to start with that question right there because, you know, you talk about getting your mind right. It is a daily thing. But let me tell you what you should not do first. If you want to get your mind right, what should you not do? Don't watch the news. <laughs> Don't watch the news. There's nothing good on news. Matter of fact, as I record this uh, just a couple days ago is when uh, that whole situation in Washington, D.C. took place. Um with the Capitol building. And I watched it for about 10, 15 minutes, was absolutely disgusted. I turned the TV off and I felt sick to my stomach for, geez, the last two days after that. So now what I'm saying is this, you gotta be careful of if you do watch the news, not to overconsume it and do not watch it before you go to sleep. Not a good means to get a good night's sleep. So the news, Cut out the drinking and don't eat like garbage. Eating like garbage, drinking alcohol, uh, bad habits. Don't do those things. Uh, they're only going to prevent you from getting your mind right. What should you do to get your mind right? Well, just the opposite. Work out. Eat clean. Listen to podcasts like this. Surround yourself with other fire-breathing dragons, other mind-right maniacs who are going to help you think right and get your mind right. And uh, also, when you get your mind right is uh, suck it up. You know, sometimes you just got to suck it up. Sometimes I think we think that it should always be easy. Uh, Sometimes I think, like, can I just have it easier? Yes, we all want it easier these days. Yes, we all want things to to calm down. And can we get some reprieve? Yeah, me as well. But sometimes you just have to use the words, suck it up, buttercup. Suck it up, buttercup. It's something I say to myself. Well, pretty much every day. Like when you start feeling sorry for yourself, permit yourself about uh, 30 seconds and then be like, all right, we got to go. Suck it up. We got to, we got to, we got to fight. And remember, we always talk about pressure is what creates diamonds. And the, the, you know, what we're feeling these days is just as a reminder, it's okay to like take some downtime. So when I say suck it up and you got to grind and have grit, I'm not saying that you just have to always 24 seven beyond. But what I am saying is every now and then you got to stop and get some mellow yellow time and, and uh, get some time to uh, put some, some fuel in the tank or get your batteries recharged so that you can continue to have that energy as well. So great question to kick us off today on the show. Number two, I'm going out to the feisty underscore cheese, feisty cheese. Suggestions to start building up muscle after losing 152 pounds. I want to be thick like an oak tree. Feisty cheese, you want to be thick like an oak tree. It sounds like you used to be thick like an oak tree. So why would you want to be thick like an oak tree if you've lost 152 pounds? Feisty cheese, man, I appreciate you all the all the time commenting on the podcast episode, sharing. I see the love you're spreading out there uh, in the Southeast. So thank you very much. You know, when it comes to, uh, I'll just say, getting lean and adding muscle, right? We want to, we want to, we want to add muscle. We want to get lean. Is you got to lift, you got to lift heavy, and you got to lift more often. Yeah, you got to lift, and you got to lift some heavy stuff uh, every now and then. So your program needs to make sure that if you want to get uh, strong and you want to, as you say, thick like an oak tree. 
is uh, you want to make sure you're lifting, but I don't want you thick and round like an oak tree. I want you more like uh, a bamboo tree where you're strong roots and you're grounded from the, from the ground on up. And don't forget, folks. You got to get cardio in. Yeah, don't just lift and uh, and then get, you know, more cardio, less what? Lardio. More cardio, less lardio. I used to think when I was carrying my 220 pounds of football frame around on me, now I like to carry about 200 LBs, is uh, I used to think by supersetting my weights that that was my cardio. <laughs> Does anyone else think that still these days? Like I used to think by uh, supersetting from bench to lat pull down and doing five sets of that, that the walk between the, the bench and the lat pull was the cardio. And I do 45 minutes of strength training and my cardio literally was the pace and tempo that I kept. Now I still love supersetting. No doubt about it. I still superset all the time so that I keep the tempo up, but you got to get some movement in. So feisty cheese. Make sure you're lifting, you're lifting heavy, you're lifting often, but don't negate the cardio. More cardio, less. Very good, my friends. Lardio. Number three, third question. We're going up to Canada. And uh, my man, R Hoop 341. Thank you, R Hoop 341, for what you do up in the Vancouver, Canada area. You keep protecting the public and our safety up there. So, uh, man, I just, I, I love seeing, guys, I see. I see the IG stories at like 4 a.m. It's Canada. It's like minus 20 degrees Celsius. And, and, and he's out there in the garage with the gray hoodie on getting after it. So he asks, next to the arm farm, TD, what's your favorite exercise you enjoy? Well, our hoop 341, bench press. Sorry to disappoint all of you, but if it's not the arm farm, I love the bench press. Yep, that goes back to my Jersey meathead days. Uh, but I love, I do love the bench press. I love supersetting the bench press with the one-arm row. Uh, does TD ever get angry? Good question. I get hangry often. If I don't eat, I get hangry. Anyone else get hangry out there? And uh, honestly, I do get angry. I was angry the other day when I saw what was going on in D.C. I was angry. I don't get angry often, but I was, <laughs> I was angry. I was frustrated. I was confused. I woke up the next day angry, literally angry, like, what can I do to help this situation? What can I do? I don't know. Did anyone else feel that? Just when you see that, I'll call it anarchy. You're like, what, what are people thinking? Like, obviously they're not, but like, what are they doing? Like, have we really lowered our standards this much to actually just become a, a bunch of animals? So yes, I do get angry. Uh, but I don't want to keep that that anger inside of me. And like I said earlier in the show is like, I want to make sure that I'm going to like that that morning, a couple of mornings ago, I made sure I got my workout in. I had my music on. I had my podcast going. I was I was cranking and my mind was right after that. Um, when he also asked, when healthy, do you train every day? I like to lift. Um, I do my presses, rows, lunges, uh, or do you take days off in between training? So he's asking more about kind of my structure in a week of workouts, including the tempo. So here's the deal. Uh, as most of you know, I am recovering from a partial knee replacement in early December 2020. I'm about five weeks out as I record this. So I'm getting back into it now. And man, it feels great to get back into it. So when healthy... I do train most days of the week. I like to do something every day for the reason to get my mind right. Not because I want to get lean like an oak tree, feisty cheese. But what I do want to do is I want to feel good and I want to have my mind right. Because I realize that when I'm training and I'm moving, uh, the endorphins that are released are going to allow me to think bigger, to be more clear, to be a better man, to be a better husband, to be a better father, just to be a better person, period. Uh, on that stuff. So when we say train, I'm even just saying I'm getting out every day and doing either a, a walk, uh, getting out there with the pup and getting out for a walk in the brisk morning. When I say brisk, unfortunately, for most of you, uh, 38 degrees uh, at, at 530, six o'clock in the morning is cold in San Diego. But uh, getting out in the brisk morning feels good. And uh, doing something every day outside and in the home gym or at Fitness Quest 10. Uh, and the way I do it typically is I'll do weights one day. I'll do a little more cardio the next, weights the next day. So I do a lot of push-pull, agonist, antagonist type stuff. And um, I'm going to go about 
about 30 minutes on the strength training, 20, 30 minutes on the movement training. It's about an hour total. Combine that with my morning uh, routine, which is going to be some devotional time, some prayer time, and uh, a few minutes of just journaling my thoughts. Uh, that's my routine. It's taken me about 90 minutes uh, these days to do that. I'm realizing the days I'm cheating my morning routine are the days I'm cheating my myself for the rest of the day because uh, when I was in recovery mode and wasn't able to exercise and train the way I wanted to, there were days where I felt not good. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel like uh, TD. I didn't feel like me, right? So uh, you've all been there before. And if you're there today, listening in, get moving, get outside. Oh, it's snowing out. Good. Get out there. Enjoy a little walk in the snow. Uh, let me know where you're at. And I'll come go for a little walk with you. Pretty soon I'll be running with you too. Uh, next up, we're going, uh, I don't, Jaco, Jaco band underscore number four. Uh, I want to be as driven as you. How do you build up the stamina not to burn out? Jaco band underscore on the Instagram. Number one. Um, oh, how do I say this? I think everyone's got a certain amount of drive in them. You don't want to like, I don't want to be as driven as you. I would say, you don't want to be me, be you. Uh, I think when you, you look at me and you hear me share very, authentically and open uh, with you here on this podcast and on my social media is, is this number one, you got to find your passion. What is your passion in life? You got to do what you love to do because when you do what you love to do, you're going to be energized and that's going to fuel you. So passion is fuel and we all need fuel these days, right? Can I get an amen on that? We all need fuel. So passion is fuel. We also need purpose. Purpose is going to drive you so that when you are tired, when, not if, when you are tired, you're like, why am I doing this? Why am I waking up earlier, staying up later? Why am I, when I'm hitting these ruts in the middle of the afternoon, why do I hit? Because your purpose is to dot, 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 fill in the blank. Why do you do what you do? Well, because I want to motivate and inspire uh, at least 10 million people in my lifetime, or at least one person every single day. That's why when I receive p uh, feedback from people like you, it fires me up. Passion and purpose allows you to do what you're designed to do. And once again, when it comes to staying fired up and having the stamina not to burn out, there are times when I'm going hard for weeks and weeks and months or months, the last nine months in 2020, I was going hard, but it also took me several weeks to recover when I was down and out for my recovery with my surgery to get the mellow yellow time. Folks, we all need some downtime. Maybe it's a day. Maybe if it's a long weekend. I know vacations aren't uh, real rampant these days. You can't get on a, a, a plane and go wherever you want. You can't get in a car, just drive where you want because you don't know if things are open. But you can get a little staycation. You can turn your phones off, your computers off, your social media off every now and then for a day or two or three. And watch how it allows your whole body to recover and relax and rejuvenate, get revitalized. So, um, man, don't try to be like me, uh, Jaco Ben. I would just say find your passion. Keep searching for deeper purpose. And, uh, and that's going to allow you to continue to be fueled by spirit as well, right? Uh, uh, Terrell C16, that's my man, Terrell Chestnut on the IG. Uh, he asks, hey, how do, you, how do you recommend TD taking the first step, whether it be public speaking or life? Hmm. So this goes down to when you all have a dream. And you all have a dream to do something big or small, whatever that is you want to, you want to, let's just say you want to be special in life. You want to do something in your occupation, your career, uh, your business or your job. Um, and you, you want to, what do you do to take the next step? The first step uh, for you, Terrell Chestnut, because I know what you're made of because uh, TC was a pro athlete. He played for the San Diego Superchargers. Yes. And he is a, a very special young man. Um, when it comes to, he asked public speaking or life, the first step is what I'd say for a man like this, who uh, has one heck of a story is to create your own show, to create your own show on YouTube live. Yep. That's where I'd start. If I was you, I go to YouTube live. It's free. I don't care if there's zero people there, a hundred people or a thousand people that show up to your YouTube live. When you show up consistently, either day after day or week after week for the TC Terrell Chestnut show at 12 noon every Friday or Monday through Friday, um, that is wonderful practice that is allowing you to grow your brand and to start to impact more people and attract more people who like yourself um, have either been through foster care, 
who has had maybe a sibling pass away at a young age, um, who had the dream and desire to play uh, uh, college sports. For you, it was Division I football at West Virginia. Uh, but for any young athlete dreaming to play at the next level, and then once in college to dream about playing at the profession, professional ranks and then achieve that, um, despite severe adversity and then to do that for several years. So I would share that story and whether it be Facebook, Instagram, I say YouTube live because I think you can grow your platform on YouTube live and uh, eventually begin to monetize that as well, which will then ultimately lead to your next steps when we get back to speaking live on the platform and on the stage. So uh, TC, I appreciate you asking that question. And uh, for any of you looking for the next step, the first step in your career, it takes risk. It takes putting yourself out there. And what I find is the most successful people put themselves out there and they share the things that aren't so pretty in life, uh, as well as the things that sometimes are working well. So it's the mistakes, the failures, the setbacks, or the adversities that you faced in life that typically set you apart, set your story apart, and ultimately set you up for success as well. Loving the questions. Fifth one uh, comes from underscore EM underscore R underscore Thompson. I recently watched Strong on Netflix. Amazing, by the way. For you, what was the hardest part to do? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Netflix, but I think they're doing a, uh, some special promotions of Strong because in the last two to three weeks, I've had more people DM me that they've watched Strong again and um, have been recently inspired by the show. So thank you, uh, Emmer Thompson, for that question and watching Strong. I guess the hardest part for me, uh, there, were, there were a few things. I, I, first and foremost is what no one sees. I had to leave my family for three months, count them, three months. And when I say leave, when you're on uh, a reality TV show, you don't have your phone all the time. Matter of fact, you only had it for an hour a week. Sounds kind of nice right now, by the way. Strong two. Can we get a strong two? I'm ready to rock and roll. This time, I think I'll be like the host of the show. Uh, but <laughs> the hardest part was being away from the family, being away from my kids. At that time, they were, you know, they were playing football. My two sons were playing football. My daughter was growing up and was playing soccer. I was away from my wife. I was away from Fitness Quest 10. And man, I missed that stuff. But on the actual set, which was up in Malibu, California, I might go out to visit that place pretty soon. Um, guys, I, I don't care how young or old you are. If you ever have love to compete, you'll always love to compete. Right. So I was I was 44 when I filmed that show. Let me tell you what. I still love to compete. Uh, I don't care if you are if you're an athlete or not. If you like to compete, you'll always love to compete. Uh, uh, if you're 70 years old, you're going to love to compete at that point. Hardest part for me was competing and recovering really quick because I was putting everything into every competition I had. And I wasn't quite recovering like some of the, the young 20 somethings that were in the show. And uh, it wasn't every week we were competing it was like every day or every other day and i was going uh, literally all out uh on that stuff so it was the recovery side which uh certainly um was an awesome awesome experience although i've had a couple surgeries since then because of all the the output that i had as well but it was worth it no doubt about it uh next up you can be fit too good name you can be fit too <laughs> good question what do you miss about jersey followed up by nick citro asked San Diego or Brick, New Jersey? What's your choice? A lot of Jerseyites in the house. Jerseyites, what's up? What do you miss about Jersey? Well, it'd be easy to say the food. Pizza, subs, bagels, crumb cake, pork roll and cheese. <laughs> that stuff will get you in trouble. But what I miss the most about Jersey are the people. I love Jerseyites. I love Jersey, folks. If you're not from Jersey, I'm sorry. I know you make fun of us. But I love Jersey people, man. It's, you talk about Jersey strong. I honestly believe that there's something in the water in Jersey that makes Jersey people different in a good way. So I love it. There's something that makes Jersey folks strong. As a matter of fact, you, you look behind a lot of successful companies. And typically somewhere in there, there's a little Jerseyite somewhere in there helping to create the DNA within that company. But I love, I love Jersey. And uh, to answer Citro underscore Nick, San Diego or Brick, New Jersey. I can't choose that because both are home, man. I, I, I always joke around that, you know, I've been out here in San Diego now for 20 something years, 
Brick, New Jersey, man. I, I, I think I bleed green to this day, to the day I die. That's home. And uh, I think about 13 Edgewood Drive. I think of Princeton Avenue. I think of Coach Wolf. I think of, you know, all my my great friends growing up, the Bobby Woods, the Bill Kleischer, the Jeff Stansbury's. These are kids and guys, you know, that I grew up with that I'll go to the grave with someday because they're just, those, those are my boys. And um, there's something special about the bond of your childhood friends. And uh, in my dream world, someday I'd have a place right here in San Diego's. I do. I'd have a beach home back on the Jersey shore and I'd have a place in the mountain somewhere in between uh, on that stuff. So you got to dream big, right? But to answer your question, you can be fit. That's what I miss about Jersey. And he also asked, what's your number one tip for someone starting a fitness studio? Um, uh, I, you know, right now, if you're starting a studio, I would say the number one thing you've got to do is you've got to serve people. You got to serve people. When I say serve people, sometimes it sounds so rhetorical. I would serve them and ask them the question, how can I best help you today? Today. I think all that matters these days is today. Like, yes, we want a vision. Yes, we want a dream. But as a coach, and as a trainer, I think what we want to do is we want to make sure we can say, how can I best help you today? What can I do to make you better today? Because when I talk about the 1% rule, what can we do today to get 1% better? I ask you right now on this Impact Podcast show, what can you do today to get 1% better? Maybe it's listening to this podcast and taking action on something with your, with your nutrition, your diet, your training, your mindset, something you're going to declare right now as you're walking, as you're running, as you're jogging, you're lifting. You're like, you know what? I got to get this today, baby. I got to get my mind right. I'm going to get my tail wagon. We're going to rock and roll uh, through that. So ask your clients, what do you need that I can best help you with? And closely connected to that, the seventh question, I've got 10 of them that came through. I've had actually dozens. I narrowed it down to 10. Coach Gonzo, 17. Coach Gon, 17. Gonzalo Martinez. Great, good question. He asks, check this question out right here. He asks, did you see yourself 20 years ago where you're at today? Did you see yourself where you're at right now? You know how they say, where do you see yourself in 10 years? If I'm asking, uh, I'm asking if years back before Fitness Quest 10, when you're barely starting in this industry, did you visualize your present where you're at now? Or do you have a different goal in mind? Thanks, coach. Huge fan of yours. Uh, man, that's a deep question. Uh, Gonzalo, uh, no way. No, I didn't see I, 20 years ago. I didn't see myself where I'm at today. Honestly, when I was starting Fitness Quest 10, no clients, no money, no business plan. Uh, I didn't even really have much of a vision. I didn't even know exactly what my purpose was otherwise, other than I wanted to help people. Uh, again, when you're starting a business and you have no clients, you have no business plan and you have no money, it's not highly recommended that you even start a business. But back in 1999, year 2000, when I started Fitness Quest 10, you could do that. You can get away with it. Why? Because I had a lot of passion. I had the desire to help people and I was willing to take a risk. I negotiated three months rent free. And um, I somehow snookered uh, Jersey style, the landlord into believing that I was somehow like some physical therapist uh, that he didn't really understand what a personal trainer and a, and a training studio did. So I actually said, well, I don't even collect membership. I just train people when they want to come in one on one and train with me. So it's, there's not gonna be a lot of people here. It's not gonna be a regular membership type gym. And it wasn't for many, many years. We didn't have that. Uh, so no, I didn't have that vision. And even 10 years ago where I'm at today, a lot of things have happened in the last decade that have certainly uh, allowed me to continue to grow. But I'll say this, when I look back 20 years ago, I certainly am not where I envisioned. Um, and I'm very, very, um, proud of the steps that we as a business took, um, to get to where we are today, but who I am today and where I'm going, um, in 10 years from now, I'll certainly be a lot different than who I am today because of my focus on continued growth and my my faith that I don't want to be uh, where I'm at in 10 years from now and be in the exact same space today. I think all of us have the desire to grow. And um, for me, when I look back, I certainly in not even 10 years, in five years, it's coming down to every, every year to continue to grow. We look back at 2020 and the amazing growth that we all had because of the adversity that we faced. So I'm excited for the next decade uh, coming up here. And when I look at you know years 20 through 30 uh, in my business, and I've been in the industry now for 25 plus years, in the 
perpetual growth, even outside of fitness. For me, it's going to be more speaking and more writing, a lot more coaching, coaching uh, in all aspects, not just training on that. I think fitness and exercise and training and mindset will always be the core of who I am. But certainly uh, when we look at high performance of what is it going to take for uh, a man or a woman, you to be the best that you can possibly be. I want to help people explore their limits and get everything out and they can possibly do so they, they can reach their maximum potential. Right? So good question, Gonzalo. Last three questions actually deal uh, for trainers. Samerica says, what's your number one tip for a beginning trainer. Uh, this is similar to what I said earlier, but make it about them. Make it about them. Uh, common common mistake of green trainers, young fitness professionals is you make it about yourself because many times you either had a successful athletic career or you were an athlete and you got hurt. So that puts you into fitness or you had some form of adversity and, and you use fitness or nutrition to help you get to where you are today, which is fantastic. It's part of your story. And that's awesome. And people deserve to know your story. But remember, when someone is hiring you, you want to use your expertise and wisdom to ultimately turn it around and help them back. How do you get in their head, their heart, and their spirit? I call it the hara. The head, the heart, the hara. The three H's. The three H's. When you can get in the head, the heart, and the hara, now all of a sudden you can start to work with people and and and, and connect and impact them at an emotional and spiritual level, that's when you can make change. So if I was coaching you as I am right now on the impact show is I can certainly tell you how to exercise and, and mentally you can visualize that and see that, but I've got to also make sure you have the desire, the emotion, the willpower uh, to change and to make the changes necessary as well. Uh, James Welton, number nine asks, if you are an aspiring entrepreneur in fitness, if you are an aspiring entrepreneur in fitness today, would you start a brick and mortar, online, semi-private, small studio, 24-7 with other offerings or something else? Given the current climate, I'm eager to hear your answer if you are in the shoes of someone who would just be starting out in 2021. James Welton. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> if I was just starting out, uh, number one, I say congratulations, James, or anyone else who's listening in or contemplating potentially going into the health, fitness, uh, or wellness field. When I say congratulations, I do believe if you listen to my predictions uh, episode about that, I do believe that at the tail end of 2021 and beyond, People are going to need health, fitness, and wellness more than ever before. Well, they need it now, but it's going to be huge and booming uh, when we get through all of this pandemic uh, and people start to come out uh, of their homes and closets again and everything else. Because a lot of people who still uh, are not showing up at their studios and gyms uh, on that. So anyway, it's going to be really, really, really important that we have great coaches that are ready to go. So yes to the brick and mortar. Uh, I would say if it was me starting out in 2021, I had nothing again. I had no clients. I had no money and no business plan. I certainly would keep it small. I would have videos in there that I could stream online. So yes, there's got to be an online component today in some way. And it could simply be through uh, Zoom or Facebook. I'd have that online component. I'd keep it small. I wouldn't have large group uh, classes quite yet. If I was starting out, I'd keep it one-on-one -on -one, and I'd develop great relationships with my clients like I did 20 years ago. And um, I'd make sure it's it's a boutique, uh, high, high touch, high service, niched out studio where people felt like it was the Ritz Carlton of training where they can come and be safe, feel like they could be listened to, they could be heard, and they could get an amazing experience between training and recovery that offered meditation and breath work and yoga and hands-on massage therapy. Yes, I said hands-on massage therapy on that stuff. So uh, what I would say, James, if it was me, that's what I would be doing is I would certainly uh, be keeping it small and stealth-like, but also very mighty so that when when I wanted to expand, you, you know, you could expand if you were starting out because you want to ultimately at the end of the day, we got to get through these next couple years um, in interesting times coming up. So you want to make sure that you can always uh, have where your revenues are going to exceed your expenses. So uh, the less you can keep your overhead, the better. And the more you can serve people, the better. Great, great question, James. Last question. Just kind of a fun one. Uh, Jeremy.Suckup, S-U-K-U-P. Jeremy, thank you for your comments 
all the time on the IG. I love this question. Does the stress of owning a gym take the fun out of training and working out? So Jeremy, thank you. As a fellow uh, business owner, I always think it's interesting that people who don't own gyms think, God, it must be so easy for you. You own a gym, like, or you're a trainer at a gym. Look at this beautiful studio or health club that you work at. It must be so easy. People, I think, often believe that because you're a trainer or a coach, it must be so easy because you work in the environment so you can just work out all day long. I, I used to be amused by that because uh, when I started out my business, I didn't have any clients, so I used to work out all the time. And then all of a sudden, I got clients, and, in, and now um, – my workouts aren't usually too successful at Fitness Quest 10. Or what I'll do is I'll take my headphones and I'll put my headphones on. And when I put my headphones on, many times at Fitness Quest 10, I'm not even listening to any music. If there's any Fitness Quest 10 members or clients listening in, um, don't worry. I can probably still hear you. But what happens, as you know, is uh, many times when you're working out, you really want to focus on your training and your workout, listen to your breath and, and get breathless. And it feels good to exert yourself. And um, sometimes when you own a gym uh, or you're a trainer gym, people are always wanting to talk to you. And the one thing I, I don't love to do when I'm working out is to, is to have a conversation for long periods of time. I like to train. I like to work out. I like to talk a little smack too, but I don't like long conversations. I always say when you're working out, you should feel like you could talk, but you really don't want to talk. So I understand what Jeremy's asking here. Um, so I just have done a couple of things to combat that situation as far as um, I still work out probably two, sometimes three times a week at Fitness Quest 10 because I love it. There's nothing like the energy energy and the environment uh, and the positivity uh, with the music going and hear the clamor of people talking or talking smack and seeing life is really, really uplifting. But I also several years ago, about five years ago, created my own home gym. Um, and most mornings of the week, I'm going to go in that home gym. And this is my time. Sometime between 5 and 7 a.m. is when I'm going to be in there and I'm going to be getting after it. I'm going to do my little walk outside. I'm going to go in that home gym and I'm going to get some facet cardio in and I'm going to get a little bit lifting in as well. Um, because when I'm, when I'm in there, no one's bothering me. I'll put my headphones on or my music on. And, uh, and when I'm getting after it, kids are still sleeping. My wife's still sleeping. Sometimes, sometimes she's out uh, getting after it in the neighborhood too. But uh, to have that time is really important because that's my time. And that's the only time that's going to set the, the day on fire. So I find that very, very important as well. And the other thing I'll just mention is uh, when it comes to training and working out for myself, I don't know about all of you, but I think getting outside a couple times a week, especially right now is really, really important. Not only because of the vitamin D that is going to help your immunity, um, because we all need sunlight, but the energy that uh, nature provides. And whether it's snowing out or or it, if you're in a warmer climb, a warmer climate, I think that being outside is extremely healthy. It's wonderful for the mind. It's wonderful for the soul. You can get some great workouts in, whether it be at a park course uh, station or you're just going out there and you're you're huffing up the up and down the hills. Um, you're seeing people, whatever it may be. Get outside and move. So for me, I like to mix it up. A couple times a week at Fitness Quest 10, I'm in the home gym uh, here, which is my my third car garage that I've just made into my own little energy cave. And if you if you're on social media, you probably be seeing me in there getting after it. It's my little abode. And that's where I get my mind right most mornings of the week. So Jeremy, uh, does the stress of owning a gym take the fun out of training, working out? No, I just have shifted my own expectations, knowing that when I am at Fitness Quest 10, that part of my workout is going to be connecting with people, talking trash, having some fun, hitting the arm farm, getting after it, and uh, going to ultimately be giving some high fives, although not right now, but I'm definitely going to be giving some high fives again in the near future as well. So uh, folks, there you have it. 10 great questions. Fitness Quest 10, 10 great questions. Uh, we had dozens that came in. So continue to keep your eyes peeled on my Instagram when I ask for those questions or at any time you can always email me uh just Durkin at fitnessquest10.com, Durkin at fitnessquest10.com. If you go to our website too, toddurkin.com, toddurkin.com, uh, you check out the podcast page. You can look at all the previous episodes of our podcast, as well as there's a section there to 
to ask any question that's on your mind. And I love hearing from you because we have people who I know listen to this show that I've never heard from. Please reach out. Let me know where you're, you're listening in from and, and your routine. I love to study people's routines and whether you're listening in the morning, in the evening. Um, a shout out to all of our, our first responders and um, doctors and nurses because I know I've had several people who are in the health field, in the medical field, reach out to me specifically and say, thank you. I needed that energy uh, because the, the shifts have been long at the hospital. Um, or if you're an ambulance driver up in LA, I got you. I hear you. Uh, keep it on up. So my friends, thank you. Thank you for what you did. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode. It was full of Q&A from all over the board, from getting your mind right to getting your body right, to training, to nutrition, um, the mindset into, into the fitness business as well. So whatever you do, remember this, go out there today. Own today. I want you to have your mind right today. Think about what you're going to eat and choose great foods today. When you're eating it, is it going to fuel me up or is it going to actually negate my energy, going to pull my energy down? And what should you do? What should you do versus what should you not do? Don't do the things you shouldn't do that aren't going to get that mind right. So go out there and have an incredible day. Thank you for who you are and what you do. Until next time, remember, train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact. Impact.